If you want to learn how to measure and plot temperatures, build wireless radio controllers, use servos to drive tools, or build weird things like, I don't know, a thermal camera, here you'll learn mechatronics in minutes. Let's learn how to build your own PCB boards using a thermal paper transfer method. I found this to be the most reliable. Tools, clothes iron, toner type laser printer, sorry, no ink jets, and a drill press. Most of these supplies you probably have around the house except for the muriatic acid. You can get that at any hardware store or a pool store. And of course, you're going to need some thermal transfer paper for printed circuit boards. While these steps look a little complicated, I can generally design, etch, drill, and solder a printed circuit board before I can wire, solder, and debug a breadboard. Step number one is to generate your PCB trace layout. Whatever software package you use, you will need to be able to print them out in a one-to-one -one scale. Make sure you print out maximum quality and the highest resolution. Some software packages can only generate JPEGs, PDFs, or DXF files. That won't be good enough. Generally, image files won't be high enough resolution to print out on the thermal paper. I recommend adding registration corners to your PCB layout. This will help align the copper board later on. Because we're applying the traces to the back of the copper board, they will need to be a mirror. Whether you design or print that way, the end result needs to be a mirror. I'm going to skip the process of generating the trace layout, but if you want to see how I do it, skip to the six minute mark. Once you've printed your design out on paper, it's a good practice to dry fit everything. Lay all of your components out on the paper to make sure they all fit. You'd be surprised on what looks good on the screen might not be good on paper. One trick I like to do is tape the thermal paper directly to the paper itself. That way I know exactly what it's going to print and I can save some thermal paper in the process. Step number two, it's time to print the design out on the thermal paper. You're printing on the shiny side of the thermal paper. Step number three, once your traces are printed, it's time to transfer everything to the copper. Board prep is everything. Make sure the copper is clean and oil free. Start with some 4 aught steel wool and give the copper side a good scrub. Keep your fingers off the board. Even a small amount of oil from your fingers will keep the thermal paper from sticking properly. Knock the dust off and hit it with some acetone. Again, keep your fingers away. Also, make sure you're in a well-ventilated place because acetone will get you high and give you Dane Bramage. Lay the board on the thermal paper copper side down. Use the registration marks on the paper to align the board. Use some tape to tape the board down. I found you only need to tape on one side. Next, time for some good old fashioned ironing. Make sure your iron is set as hot as it will go and turn the steam option off. This will take some time. You're going to want to iron until you see the wax actually bleed through the paper. This is going to get very hot so give it ample time to cool. Once it's cooled, run it under some cold water to help separate the paper from the copper carefully peel the paper away. If you happen to experience an excessive amount of toner sticking to the thermal paper, you probably don't have the board cleaned enough. You're going to have to start all over again. Reprep the board and reapply your thermal paper. Use a magnifying glass to inspect the traces. If you find any pits or cracks, get a sharpie out and fill them in. Step number four, time to etch the board. Since we're using acid, time to get your safety gloves on and your safety glasses. We're going to be mixing two parts hydrogen peroxide and one part muriatic acid. Make sure you're mixing the chemicals in a glass or plastic bowl and make sure it's large enough to contain the part. Carefully drop the part in the bath so it doesn't splatter acid all over the place. I find the etching process generally takes about 30 to 40 minutes. Agitating the board about every five minutes to get fresh chemicals over the copper helps speed the process. During the etching process, the acid dissolves the copper and turns the bath green. Whatever you do, don't drink the acid bath. The etching process is complete. Step 5. I can't stress the importance of this step enough. You cannot simply throw the acid bath down the sink or dump it in the ground. It's highly toxic and highly acidic and will dissolve metal pipes. Adding water to the acid bath will only dilute it. It needs to be neutralized, and you're going to do that with baking soda. Keep adding small amounts of baking soda until the fizzing stops. Once the fizzing stops, the acid bath is neutralized and can be dumped down the toilet. Wash your PCB board thoroughly and then inspect it. Step 6. Time to drill the PCB boards. 
you're going to want to get special PCB drill bits of an appropriate diameter. Different components will require a different drill bit size. Consult the components data sheet to get the appropriate drill bit diameter. Also, set your drill speed to its maximum speed and forget about using a hand drill. These drill bits are very fragile and will definitely break. When drilling a pattern of holes, use a backstop to act as a guide. Well, if you've made it this far, you're home free. Step 7. Clean the board and solder it. Use some acetone to wipe the toner off. Again, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. Feel free to give your PCB board one last rub of steel wool before you start soldering. Notice how the text has been etched into the copper layer. Hopefully by this point you know what to do with a soldering iron and some solder. This process does not include solder masking, so you will have to be a little careful when you're soldering things that are close together. This appendix will be rather long, but shows how I generate my PCB layouts. In this part of the process, we're going to generate the artwork for the traces. There are several packages on the market that will allow you to do this. Here I'm using PCB Artist, a free download. We'll go ahead and create a new uh, PCB design. Uh, even though you can create a schematic, I am going to be doing everything by brute force and manually laying everything out. And we're going to take all the defaults. Even though you can do multi-layer with this, I am doing single layer only as I've yet to find a good way to do multi-layer in my garage. Uh, my design is a, a cute little temperature humidity recorder. So I've got a display, I've got a TNC 3.2 and an AM302 for the sensor. So let's go ahead and play some components. Now if you download this software here and you go and type in displays to your libraries, you'll probably not have anything. I added these because I use a bunch of these displays. I'm going to place a 2.8 somewhere on my, my sheet. And I'm going to rotate this around hitting the R because I want the SD card at the bottom so I can maybe get data out of it. And then we'll place a Teensy 3.2, my MCU of choice. And uh, I don't have a sensor in here, the AM302, so I'm going to, like I said, brute force this thing. And I'm going to draw my own uh, traces, so I'm going to put my own pins in there for the actual connectors. So this is a VCC. The data line, no connection, and the ground. So now all I have to do is just route everything. If you've ever played the phone game Flow, this is the same game but on steroids. There are a couple rat's nests on here that are already generated, or at least rat lines, I think some people call them. Um, I have got my pins already named for uh, things like SCK goes to SCK, so I don't have to do the, uh, the basics. However, some things I don't have on here like the interrupt request for the uh, touch. So I'm going to assign this to a net, and I'm going to make this uh, pin 0. Actually, I think they call it Rx here, so let's change that to Rx. And yeah, 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 yeah. And for the uh, chip select, we will change this to Tx, because that's what it's called on the Teensy. And sure, knock yourself out. And I think the chip select will change us to pin 10. And for the RST, we'll make that pin 8. And we'll call this pin 8. And DC, we're going to leave that on, or not leave it on, but put it on uh, pin 9. So it's going to change the net to pin 9. And it should generate uh, rats' nests or rats' lines for all, except for the chips. Like that didn't seem to work, did it? CS, maybe it's called CS. There we go. Now it's just a matter of routing everything around. Let's do uh, a few more here. Let's give this uh, net A0 because it's nice and close by. And. We need uh, VCC, so this is actually the RETS, this is called 3v3. And data, let's put this on, oh, I don't know, how about pin 7? We'll add this to a net, and we'll call it 7. And this is pin 7, we'll call it pin 7 as well. And we have one last one, and that is ground. 
I think we've got everything all sort of rat lined out for us. Now we just need to connect everything up. So here's the general process. We are going to uh, start with uh, anything and we're going to route it until we either have to add a jumper manually or figure out some neat way to get from point A to point B. So I'll just start uh, lower left and we'll uh, go from point A to point B and then the next one maybe this little guy up here we'll drag him down and just route this all the way around until I get everything where I need it to uh, to go. Now I'm getting kind of lucky here um, that everything seems to just fall magically into place and you'll see in a few minutes that's not always going to be the case. So let's go ahead and add uh, the SP Alliance to the display. Actually we'll do the, the um, touch first and we'll just uh, get these things to just magically fall into, uh, into place and I think right about now we're gonna start to run into where things are landlocked and I can't get to anything so here's the decision you got to make is which one do you want to have go to where so I'm going to uh, move this up and over and like I said if you've ever played the game flow this is exactly what we're gonna be doing here and then we'll go to uh, pin 8 and that is, I think I could get it right up through here. And I think if I move these around, we'll be able to uh, get some kind of room for all of my, my traces here. Nope, we're landlocked there, so we can't get him inside. So let's see if we can pull him down and go to the inside. And you, you get to the feeling on uh, what I'm having to do here, just kind of manually move things and, and route them um, by all by hand. Now I've, I've done this probably a hundred times and um, I'm used to this and I can actually fly through these, these things pretty quick. First time you do this you're gonna be cussing me out saying I can't believe Chris got me involved in all this manual stuff here this is horrible why am I doing it um, because you can get a prototype done in about a few hours and that's the uh, the beauty of this. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna pause the video actually no I'm not I'm going to uh, create some some jumpers and then we're going to pause the video. So let's go ahead and add a few more. Uh, going from SCK, notice how I can't get to this SCK down here and I don't see a good way. Maybe if I, sorry, if I route up and over and down, I can get to it that way. I think that's going to work for us. And I can give myself a little bit more move it around room here to get things kind of situated. Here's uh, something that's landlocked. No matter what I do, I don't think I can get this all the way to the pin up here. No matter how I route it around and up and down and over, it just isn't going to do it. So what we're going to do is add some manual jumpers. Now, if we were doing this with a um, two-layer board, if we we're being professionally done, you probably would add to, need to add zero jumpers. But here, garage, like I said earlier, single board, you're going to have to add some jumpers. So we're going to add a, one for... Pin zero, pin one, and there's a pin here and a pin right down here. So I'm going to go from my um, different pins here. And I'm just going to route them around to where I think they need to go. And I'm getting real sloppy here. Don't worry about you know moving over things just yet. Just get some wires connected up, and we'll deal with all this uh, in, a, in a minute here. All right, so I've got uh, a couple jumpers up here, and I've got to hook them down here. And I think one more, I think I've got him connected up. So we're going to drag this up. I'm going to move him over. And that's probably going to be close enough. And this little jumper right here, probably good enough there. Now I can jump over that wire. I can jump over these three wires. And you kind of get where I'm, I'm going with this. All right, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to do a little bit more work and uh, we'll come back and take a look at this in just a second. All right, I've been working for about five minutes here and I've got some pretty good progress here, uh, but uh, I need to tidy things up a little bit. Uh, you can see how my traces are actually literally running off the side of the board. And um, I don't like the uh, placement of this uh, sensor over here. It's a little too far to the edge. So I'm going to grab all four of these pads, control select and move them way over somewhere a little closer to the rest of the action here so I can scoot these wires in. For all I know, I may make this board a little bit smaller. It seems it has a lot of sort of dead space on it. A couple things to be uh, aware of that um, I've got a pad right here or a jumper and it's a little close to the USB. 
Um, I'm probably going to be able to fit a wire in there, but I might want to scoot that over just a little bit to allow it to have a little bit more room for the wire and not run into the uh, physical component. Also, a couple things that you might notice. I have got some giant traces on here. These are uh, 055 or 05 thick, which is way bigger than normal. Uh, keep in mind, this is being printed in a garage with a good old-fashioned laser jet printer and uh, some thermal paper. You're not going to be able to get real thin traces with this thing. So if you're thinking about running your lines through some uh, other pads here, uh, forget that. Keep that in mind that uh, you're going to need some pretty fat wires for these things. I'm going to do a little bit more cleanup here, so I'm going to pause the video and we'll come back in a second. All right, I'm back. I think I have everything routed, so let's do a double check. This particular software has a neat cross probing tool, so if I highlight a pin, it will show me what it's connected to. And uh, this goes right to pin zero, which I'm glad it does because it's supposed to. This goes to uh, MISO, and it seems to go to three different locations for the, uh, the, the chip, the display, and the SD card. Uh, next is... Um, MOSI, and that seems to be going to all three locations. I have got my chip select for the touch, and hang on, I think I'm missing something here. This is the clock line, and it's going from the chip to the SD card, but nothing is going to the actual uh, display itself. So I think I missed a jumper, so I'm gonna have to put one in here. All right, I'm back. I actually had to add two jumper lines to my clock line, so let me highlight it. You can see how the MCU goes to the uh, SD card, check runs to this jumper and another jumper over to my uh, display and at the same time the touch. So it looks like we've got everything on here. Just uh... All right, next uh, let's double check a few more lines. I think we were at uh, the clock and I think we're at our uh, MOSI and we're at our DC, our reset, our chip select and we have got ground going to both the ground on the sensor, the MCU and my display, and VCC seems to go to display up to my uh, MCU and over to my sensor. So it looks like we have everything done. Now it's time to add some labels here. Keep in mind that we're looking at this from the top view. So this is the component side. But uh, if you're looking at the top view, the text is gonna actually be flipped on the very bottom of it if you're, if you're looking through the top of it. So let's go ahead and add a, uh, a label on what this thing is. Humidity recorder. There's this particular package has a way to add two lines. So if I wanna add rev one, you can certainly do that in a date and blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's December already. Uh, I cannot type today. It is what it is. All right, so the text is on there, but it's the wrong size, wrong orientation, wrong everything. So what we're going to do is right-click and change the properties. Change it, of course, to Arial, because that's my favorite. And we're going to make this a lot larger here. Maybe that's too large. We'll see. And it's going to go on the uh, top copper layer, and we are going to flip this around and we'll have it place it somewhere around here. Now, it looks weird because it's backwards, but remember, we're looking through the top of the board from the top through the board to the bottom. All right, you can put as much text on here as you want. That's probably gonna be good enough for this demo here. Uh, next, what I like to do is label my jumper so I know what gets connected to what. This might be a little bit confusing over there. So let's add a um, jumper, Control-C, Control-V. And, oops, I don't know what I did there. And we'll change this to a J1. And J1 is going to go right up uh, here somewhere. Now I'm going to label the, these others, so let's pause the video for a second. All right, I'm back. I've got my jumper tags on there or labels on there. Uh, they're kind of hard to place because of the size of my grid, so I might adjust that down to something a little bit smaller, like 0 0.01. And it's going to give me a real precise control on moving these jumper labels, you know, wherever I need. Uh, keep in mind that uh, these are not silk screen printed. These are actually going to be part of the copper itself. So if you get them too close to things, um, you know, it might, uh, you might short things out. So keep it off of your copper traces. And I'm going to put them in the best location I can. 
I might scoot things some up and put the, the label right across where the wire needs to go. Of course, I can't do it for J5, but the others are fairly well behaved and I can kind of put them wherever I, uh, wherever I want. Maybe move this down and get the J1 down below a little bit and maybe J8 will stick him right in the middle. And uh, that will pretty much clear all that up. All right, if you're gonna mount your PCB board, you'll probably wanna have some holes. So what I'm gonna do is add a um, pad. I'm gonna put it on these four corners here, offset it a little bit, just pick it right at that uh, location and maybe one in the middle. Uh, what I would recommend doing is make these round and um, make them nice and fancy looking with a decent size hole and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and change uh, the pad to um, I don't know what size one is or pad one round 120 that might be good enough let's just see what that looks like and i think i'm going to be happy with that the last step in the process is to put small registration marks on your pcb board that way you can align the copper a lot easier all i'm going to do is just draw a small notch here and move it right on top of that corner then when we print this out that copper layer is going to show through and you can line your copper board. We'll do this on all four corners. All right, now time to print. Believe it or not, that's actually why I use PCB Artist for making my own PCB boards, this handy print function. I don't need to export to a graphics file or a DXF file. I can print and get the exact traces. Keep in mind that you only want to print the top copper layer. That way, all of the outlines of your board and um, any documentation will not show through. Well, that covers this week's lesson. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up. If you have a tip to share, leave a comment so my subs can learn more. Thanks for watching.